Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Vintage Electronics channel. Today we're going to be messing around with the Commodore 128 computer. We're going to go BBSing. Stay tuned. Today we're going to be bringing the Commodore 128 into the modern age. You know, this is the exact machine, this unit right here, that my dad bought back when I was a kid in the mid-80s. He swore the Commodore was the computer of the future, that all the other stuff was garbage. He might not have been right about that, but he was right about this being a great computer. This has been my favorite computer that I've ever owned throughout history. For me, this is it. And they've done a great job out there making accessories for these for the modern age to, to keep them relevant, make them easier to use for people, let people experience that vintage computer feel without a lot of the hassle, which, you know, some people like me think the hassle is worth it. But, you know, even I have one of these uh, SD to IEC adapters. I picked this up from The Future Was 8-Bit. Uh, make sure you visit their website. They've got great accessories out there. For Commodore computers that uh, you know keep them up to date. This lets you use an SD card instead of your floppy drive. I've still got the 1541 drive and I use it but this is great because I've got literally thousands of games and programs on this little card. Makes it super easy. But what we're going to talk about today is this. This is a Wi-Fi modem that plugs into the user port on the back of a Commodore. It works on the 128 or the Commodore 64. Uh, all you need is a terminal program loaded into your machine and you can actually get online and visit BBS's. That's right. If you ever wanted to check out what the internet was like before the internet, you can still do that. There are guys out there who are keeping these BBS's alive and running them on vintage machines. In fact, uh, we'll get this fired up and we'll check out one called Particles which is just an absolutely wonderful little BBS. So let's get this installed, get the computer fired up, and we'll check that out. All right, so let's get the computer fired up in C64 mode. We'll go ahead and use that since that's probably the most popular model that's out there still currently used. Now I like to use a file browser program, especially with the SD to IEC adapter that I use. When you have thousands of files in different directories, it's hard to find those using the normal routine on the Commodore. So it makes it a little bit easier to go through folders and files and find the one you want. Now I use CCGMS, which is a terminal program that's actually been around since the 80s. And it's been updated all the way through 2021, so it works great. So we'll get this fired up. And once we're inside, it's actually pretty easy. We just type an ATDT command, which is the connect command, and then the address of the BBS that we want to connect to. In this case, it's the particles BBS. Then once we hit enter, we'll actually get connected. So it looks like we are actually in. And it's just like it was back in the 80s. Now, there's some language in there about Facebook and their website, which, of course, wouldn't have been in there. Uh, but it's really nice. They support Commodore Color and Commodore Graphics. So you actually end up with a really nice intro screen here in a second. We're going to do 40 columns since we're on a Commodore 64. And then it loads up character by character, just like in the 1980s. This was the experience that you would have if you were getting on online, so to speak, and dialing up to your favorite BBS back in 1985. The gentleman that runs this one has actually been overseeing BBSs for, I think, 20 or 30 years. And he actually runs this one on a Commodore 128D and, uh, you know, floppy, floppy drives, and he's got an SD to IEC adapter, but it's all handled on a vintage machine, which is really, really neat. But we'll go in here and log in. There's my handle if anybody logs on there you can find me there at vintage electronics get your password entered in now if you're a new user it's real easy to register you just choose a, a username and a password answer a couple of questions and they let you right in now once you're logged into it 
It shows you your information, the times that you've called, the last time that you dialed in. So it's pretty neat. But once we get into it here, we'll see a little bit more. Now it does give you page breaks as you go along too to give you a chance to catch up if you've got a faster modem than what I've got. But it does start off here with a listing of the newest releases that are uh, available too. Goes in and checks the news, checks our mailbox, because you do have uh, mail capability of these also, which is which is kind of nice. First kind of email, obviously. Now the wall's kind of neat. This is an area where you can just kind of leave a public post. So it just kind of goes through. You can just read what people have to say. Sometimes there's something interesting. Sometimes it's just, you know, gibberish. But uh, like right there, you got a guy on an XL. You got a guy who's uh, visiting on a Dell Power Edge on Ubuntu. Uh, let's see, I think I saw one on there about an Apple before. Uh, guy on an SX64, which is pretty neat. Guy at 9600 baud. An Amiga A3000, that's neat. Raspberry Pi is a device to connect. So there's tons of ways to get into this, and you can actually connect to these using a modern PC and a terminal program. So you don't really need vintage hardware to be able to to get into these it just you know makes it a little bit more authentic i think if you can but it's absolutely not 100 percent necessary so now we're getting into the main menu so you have these nice you know colorful graphics this would have been a big deal back in the in the mid 80s but you can see in the menu you've got uh you can select for your messages and email there are text files like stories and things like that online games uh chat you can leave feedback for them. You can search for different users, see who's on there, vote for certain things, news, information, uh, the settings for what your terminal is going to display from them, file transfers if you want to transfer files and games back and forth. So I think first off, uh, we'll see what we can uh, load up here and take a look. Let's see what kind of games they have. Now we won't go into too much detail as far as play-in games or anything like that, just to kind of give you an idea. But there's RPGs, you've got card games, trivia games, just for fun stuff, puzzles, sports, and arcade, which is kind of neat. So we'll jump back to the main menu. Not going to play any games on here today. Just wanted to give you guys kind of an idea of what these look like. But if we go back to the main menu here, it'll load back up. And yeah, it is a little bit slow, but that's part of the charm. You know, it's the charm of the system. And it has to redraw everything because this is a, a terminal program. So as it's displayed, when it goes off of the screen, it's gone. So every time you go back to the main menu, it's got to redraw that. But you just have to have patience. The, uh, the past wasn't as fast as the present. So we all had a little bit more patience back in the day. But I think this time we'll, uh, let's see, we'll select maybe the messages and kind of see what there is to offer there so now it'll draw our message screen so it looks like you can go in there you can post a message read messages that were sent to you you can go through and auto read them you the current message boards you can post on message boards send email edit your messages so Pretty full featured, and this is pretty typical of what you would find on a BBS back in the day. You know, so this is, you know, something that could keep you busy for hours and hours and tie up your phone line all day and make your parents mad. And, and uh, <laughs> so these were always a lot of fun. This was something that I didn't have a whole lot of experience with back in the day. We didn't have a modem for our Commodore, and uh, you know, I kind of missed out on it. Commodore, when they were new, came with discs for Quantum Link, which was kind of the predecessor to, I think it was uh, AOL, maybe? I saw a video on that recently. It was kind of neat. But, uh, so, you know, this kind of gives me a taste of what I was missing back then. And actually, I'm kind of sad that I missed out on it. I think it would have been neat to, you know, experience this before it was mainstream. You know, there weren't a whole lot of people on there. 
So that kind of gives us an idea of what these BBSs are about. I would, I would definitely recommend that you get on there, check them out, and uh, you know support these guys. They're they're doing this you know for nothing just to keep it alive. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe and like this video.